Welcome to the New Calculus course. My name is John Gabriel. In this video, we will be covering the contents of Lesson 1. Lesson 1 is all about straight lines and their slopes. Now, <coughs> this is a pretty important uh, concept because it permeates all of calculus and also the way that calculus was developed. The only geometric object that has slope or gradient as an attribute is the straight line. In ancient Greece the slope was measured in terms of right angles or what you think of today as 90 degree angles or pi over 2 radians in terms of radian measure. After Newton and Leibniz, slope was measured in terms of a trigonometric ratio, the tangent ratio. And so now we're going to look at the first applet, the first self-study applet in the series, the, the nine lesson series, yes, and actually look at what happens when we rotate a line around the origin and various other, th other things that we're going to look at in a moment. So here is the applet. Let's quickly see what the ancient Greeks knew but we, and also what Newton did. This red line here has an incline. Its incline can be stated in terms of two concepts. Either the angle concept or the tangent ratio concept. So for example, we can state the slope of this line in terms of right angles, in other words, parts of a right angle. So if we had it over here, that would be zero, oops, almost zero right angles, yes? Not exact, but I think you can see where I'm going with this. There you go. So that particular line there has a slope of zero right angles or a tangent ratio which is zero. Now, rotating this line around the origin was a means to determine the slope of any line. So it doesn't matter where the line is, we can always normalize it by putting it in standard position, in other words, at the origin. The ancient Greeks knew that slope has no dimension. In other words, it's just parts of a right angle. So it's zero parts or one part, yeah, or two parts, etc. What Newton did was, I'm sorry, the Greeks know that slope has dimension. It's part of a right angle. I made a mistake there. But Newton took away the dimension aspect. In other words, he just turned it into a number. And rather than saying that the slope of this red line is parts of a right angle, he said it's the tangent ratio. In other words, anywhere along this line, if we drop the perpendicular, then it's the length of the perpendicular to the horizontal. That would be the tangent ratio. So already Newton decides, well, he's going to do away with dimension, which in this case here is in terms of right angles. In ancient Greeks, all straight lines have slope. Even vertical lines have slope. See? That has a slope of one right angle, or 90 degrees. That has a slope of 270 degrees, or three right angles. Yes? Okay, very good. But <coughs> in terms of Newton's New definition, whoops, oh, come on, there you go. It has no slope, okay, vertical lines no longer have slope. You see this little uh, epileptic 8 here? <laughs> I think that's rather funny. That supposedly means infinity, which is a junk concept, as we'll also learn about much later. And infinity is not required in mathematics or calculus and we'll learn more about that also. Vertical lines no longer have slope <coughs> in this 
particular scenario now. But they used to have slopes using the ancient Greek method. In other words, the Greeks defined slope in terms of angle, and Newton and Leibniz defined slope as rise over run. By so doing, the vertical lines no longer have slope using tan of an angle or tan of feet or whatever you want to call it. So, um, this is the first and foremost concept. Initially, the Greeks didn't even use circular measurement as you see I'm doing here. They just did all the measurement in terms of right angles. So, it, didn't, it wasn't related to an origin. And that's pretty much it for the first lesson. And in the second lesson, we're going to see that using the Newtonian or Leibnizian approach, there is really no change in X and Y. And we'll talk about that in lesson two. So thanks for joining me in this lesson, and I look forward to chatting again with you in lesson two. I'm John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. Take care.